गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर यू आर ऑडिबल ओके एंड माय स्क्रीन इज आल्सो विजिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू राइट यस विजिबल so in our last session we have discussed quantifier operator right uh, quantifier oper operator means uh, we have discussed uh, any operator all operator and uh, contents operator right so we have discussed how to work with uh, all method how to work with any method and how you can work with uh, contents method so before uh, starting the next to topics right that is how you are going to implement the group by in linq right Uh, how you are going to perform joining in linq so before that topic we need to understand one concept called uh, what is deferred execution versus immediate execution right so let us start to discuss this small topics before, because this is important uh, to understand the remaining topics right let's start the discussion by understanding what we mean by deferred execution and the immediate execution right and in the interview you might get one question what is the difference between a deferred execution and the immediate execution that you should know okay so so basically whenever we are writing linq means it's a code right behind the scene a, we are going to use some method or we are going to use some operator right and behind the scene the sql query is going to be generated right then then that means what uh, that sql query is generated is one thing SQL query executed is a different thing. Then, then the linq queries, whatever we create, right? They are going to be executed in two different ways, right? What are these two different ways? One is deferred execution, and another one is immediate execution. So, based on this deferred uh, uh, execution, based on this ex immediate execution, we need to understand two things, right? what are deferred or lazy operators and what are immediate or greedy operators so deferred execution means what if we are going to use if or you are if you were using the lazy operators or deferred operators then it is going to be execute the query in a deferred execution manner if we are using the greedy operators or uh, immediate operator that means the query execution is going to be immediate so before understanding what is deferred execution and immediate execution let us first understand what are deferred operators and what are immediate operator you might be know some of the operators right and some of the operators are also we are going to discuss in our coming session these operators uh, these query operators are used for deferred execution what are these operator if you are using select select many where take skip method right we have already discussed select select many where method we will discuss in our coming session what is this take method skip method right so if you are using operators like this means the query is going to be deferred right these operators are nothing but belongs to the category of a deferred query execute right then what is immediate operators or greedy operators the operators like the all the aggregate functions like count uh, average mean max fast last two are two list we'll discuss what is fast method last method two are two dictionary all these things two list right all these operators belongs to the category of a greedy operators so what do we mean by deferred execution and what do we mean by uh, immediate execution let us understand so we have understand there are two category of operator one is deferred category and one is immediate category and we know that if i am using this operator in my query then it is going to be deferred query and if i am going to use these operators in my query then it is going to be immediate query then we need to understand what do we mean by deferred query execution or immediate query execution let us start uh, what is uh, deferred execution right so in the case of a deferred execution the linq query is not executed at the point of its declaration this is the important point that you need to remember if you are creating a deferred query then that query is not going to be executed at the point of its declaration that means when we write a linq query it does not execute by itself it executes only when we access the query region so here the query execution here the execution of the query is default until the query variable is iterated over using a for each loop 
Let us understand this with an example. Right. So I have uh, this uh, method. We'll get some compilation error. Let me comment this one. Let me comment this one. Okay. Okay. So if you look at this example, I'm having a class called employee. I have created a list of employees. So basically, if you look at the uh, signature or if you look at the collection, basically initially, this list of employee collection contains three employees. Then I have created one query. And the query here, I'm using what I'm using, I'm using the query syntax from employee in list of employees and my condition is employee dot salary equals to 8,000 select employee. So basically what is my requirement? My requirement is I need to define a query which is going to retrieve the data from the collection who's, uh, 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 um, from the employee collection where the employee salary is greater than 8,000. Currently, uh, uh, employee salary equals to 8,000, not uh, greater than. And if you look at this collection, how many employees satisfy this condition? Two employees satisfy this condition. Employee with ID 1001 and employee with ID 1003. These two employees having the salary 8,000. <clears throat> so as for my query, these two employees should be written. Right. But, but uh, the point that you need to remember here, what operator I'm using, I'm using the select operator and the where operator. And if you see, uh, look at, uh, if you look at this category, this is select, select many where, these operators are belongs to which category? Legi operator category. And what this Legi or default execution says, Linku query is not executed at the point of its declaration. It executes when we access the query region. That, uh, what it means? It means at this point, right? At this point, the query is just created. At this point, the query is just defined. It is not executed. And when it is going to execute, whenever we access the query result variable using a for each loop for each variable, then at that time only the query is going to be executed. See. The point uh, uh, to prove this point, right? To prove that this query is not executed at this point, rather when we access the query result, at that time the query result, uh, uh, query variable is going to be executed. What I have done is to this list of employees, after generating the query, what I have done, I have added this uh, statement. That means what? Now I am going to add a new employee to this list employees. And if you see that new employee salary is also 80,000. That means if the query is executed at this point, right? that means we will get the result. If we get the result, then is this employee, right? With this ID 1004 is going to be written as part of the result. No, it will not return. But if the result, if, if at this point, the query is not executed, only generated, only generated means if we think that only the statement is generated, select a star from employee table where employee salary equals to 8. You just write the SQL statement. You have not executed. And later you add one employee again with the same condition to this collection. That means when you access at that time, it will return you two employees or three employees. Any guess? <laughs> Guys, two employees. Two employees. Why two employees? Because it will be exit. Sorry, uh, one second. Think about it. Three employees. Sorry, two or two or three. Three, three employees. Why? Because uh, it will count. It will, it is still not executed, and uh, after that statement, we added one more employee, and it will count that also. Okay. And any other answer from anyone else? If the same answer, then that's fine. If, if uh, something different answer, 
uh, if anyone thinking that uh, two employees is going to be returned or if anyone uh, then they can tell me and they need to tell me the reason why two employees why not three any different answer from anyone okay so in this case three employees are going to be returned because in this case the query is not executed as the query is not executed just created and whenever we access the query result variable at this point the query is going to be executed but before that we have added this element so this will also come as part of the output right let me run the application and show you the output see this employee one double zero Guys, am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, there are some internet issues. Okay. So now if I run the application, then you will see three employees uh, uh, in the output screen. And this is because of the deferred query execution. What is the advantages? The advantages is that it affords unnecessary query execution, which improves the performance of the application, right? That means what? Now, if uh, my requirement is just need to create the uh, query here, and I don't want to execute the uh, query at this point, rather at some different time, I'm going to execute the query, then I can go with the deferred query execution. Second, the query creation and the query execution are decoupled, which provide or the flexible to create the query in several steps. That means what? Now it means so you can create the query like this, right? For example, I can also create the query in different steps, right? So here I, I have to do this one, right? So result equals to so you can see. I have deferred the query into two steps. First, I created the uh, simple query, then I have provided the condition, right? So, so basically what it means, it means in uh, you can create the query in a multi-statement. A link to deferred execution query is always re-evaluated when we re-enumerate. As a result, we always get the updated data. See, in this case, you can see uh, the query is just created, right? And later, Let me do. No voice. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying anything. Okay. So one zero one, one zero three, one zero four. And then I'm adding another employees. I'm using this for this loop once more. Right. See, if you will look at this example, uh, what it may, what it's saying, a LinQ deferred query execution is always re-evaluate when we re-enumerate. As a result, we always get updated data. First of all, you can see uh, the list contains three elements, the condition satisfied to. 
then I have added one more element. So when we re-enumerate, I means whenever we access the query variable within a for each loop, it will give the updated result. Updated result means one, two, and this one, right? Then again, we have added one more employee which can which satisfy the given condition. And whenever we again re-enumerate, then again, we will get the updated data. That updated data also include the current uh, or the updated employee, the latest employee, what we have added. Clear, guys? What, what, what is the advantages of using uh, this greedy operators? I mean, it, the biggest advantage is that you will always get the updated record or updated data whenever you, you re enumerate And the why, uh, why this is happening? Because this is happening because the query is not executed at the time of its creation, right? Whenever we are accessing the query using a for each loop, or we are, whenever we are iterating over the query result, then at that time, only the query is going to be executed, and whatever the updated information available on the database or in the collection, that updated information will be available as part of the query result. Clear, guys? Uh, actually, I'm having a doubt. Yeah. Uh, so why it is getting two times the query has been executed? So Sorry? because the first time we have executed the query, See, the top, in, in uh, this case, we have a... in this case, in this case, what happened? In this case, the query is just created. Is the query executed? Uh, no, actually the query is created, but whenever yeah. we have written the for each first time, the query is executed. So let See, what happens? In this the case, result in will this be case, stored in the result. In this case, what is the type of this result variable? It's an employee type. I enumerable of employee. Right? Employee. Right? So so how you can access the data from this result variable? Because this is not the this result variable, it is not storing the uh, what I can say the employee data. It is what it is storing, it is just storing the query. In this case, you are using within this forest loop. So this query is executed, whatever the result return, that result we are accessing using this EMB variable one by one. At some point of time, again, you need the same result. You need the same query, right? And you need the updated data. Then how you can access those data? Do you need to write uh, 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 this query again? No. So in this case, if you want the updated information, again, you need to use that query result variable. Because this result, it is just content. What is it exactly content? It contains the query. And whenever you use inside the for each loop, that query is going to be executed. And whatever the update information, that you will get. And if you don't want this thing, right? What it, what it means, if you don't want this default query execution, you want that immediate query execution. Immediate query execution means I want to execute the query at the time of its declaration or creation and whatever the query return that I want to store inside the variable and wherever you used, I will use that data. Then that is nothing but your immediate execution, which is we are going to be discussed in some time. This is the advantage okay, of the it. default query execution, right? Clear? Mm, yes. Right. So basically, this is the default query. It is not executing the query at the time of its creation. Rather, it is default query to be executed whenever you access the query variable using a web or HTML. Clear, guys? Mm, yes. Okay. Now we will understand immediate query execution, right? So what is immediate query execution means the query is going to be executed immediately when you use any of these methods. What are the method count, average, mean, max, past, last two are a two list. If you use any of this method, then the query not only going to be created, but also going to be executed immediately. The same example you can see. The same example here I'm taking, I'm also providing the same condition. But here you can see I have used a two list method. Once I have used a two list method, then what will happen now once this query is generated, that query is going to be executed 
immediately. And once the query is executed immediately, then this result is going to store the data. It is not going to store the query. As it is going to store the returned data, later if you are any new employee to this collection, do you think that that new added employee with this event condition is going to be written as part of this result variable? Guys? See, if you, you, you are having a table, you are having an employee table, you have created one uh, query, select star from employee where uh, salary equals to 80,000 and you execute that employee and that uh, query, once you execute that employee, whatever return you get, uh, you will, uh, what you will do, you will put that uh, result inside the Excel file and that result contain five employees. Later, you add another employee to the database with the same condition, same salary. Do you think that a new or newly added employee will automatically come and store inside your Excel file? No, sir. It will not be included. It will not be included. Why? Because we have already executed the query and we have already uh, get the result. Then how later if you add a new employee, delete employee, whatever you will do, there is no link or no relation between those operations with the whatever the query result. Right. So the same thing is in this case. In this case, you created the query and you executed the query at this point only. Once you execute the query, this result variable, now it is not storing this data. Right. Okay. So, so to make you understand what I'm going to do, I, 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 first let me show you this thing with a, uh, what I can say using the, this is the default execution. Right. Not the immediate execution, let me run the application. To give you a better idea, let me run the application in debug mode, right? So F10, you can see, you can see. So currently, what is this result variable storing? System.linq.enumerable.where listener, listener and list demo.employee. That means this result variable storing the query or it is storing the result. It is storing the query only. Right? Query means linked object. How this query is going to be executed on the object, on the collection, that query it is storing. That you can see here, system.linked.enumerable.where listener uh, and there is a linked demo.employee. This is the query, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this query, right? To, to list method. So what I'm going to do, I'm changing this to, to list method. Right? So let me remove these things. I'm changing this to, to list method. Now, as I have changed this to to list method, so what will happen? The query is not only created, but the query is also going to be executed at this point. Now, if you run this application, then you will see that this result variable, it is not going to contain the query, right? What, what we have seen just uh, now, it is going to contain the result. Let me run the application. Right? Now you can see what it contains, count to two, means what two records it contains. One with this and another one with this. Later, if you add a new employee to this collection, this collection and this query result having no relation. This query result already contain two employees. If you add a new employee to this collection, that will not come and sit in, automatically inside this result variable. Why? Because the query is already executed. Now, let me move this. See, we have added one more employee, but the count is still showing me two. Right? Now, run the application and see count. Clear, guys? Yes. So this is the uh, this is the difference between your query uh, query linked query execution, right? One is 
immediate query execution. In the case of a immediate query execution, the query is not only going to be generated, but will be executed at the same time. And in the case of a deferred query execution, the query is just generated, not executed. Whenever we iterate through the query using a for each loop, at that time, the query is going to be executed, right? Once uh, and every time we iterate or every time we re-enumerate the query result, right? Enumerate the query, it is going to be executed, right? So, and the result, what will what we'll get? We'll get always the updated information, right? So, so basically, this is as per your requirement. Right. Yeah. Your requirement means if you want the uh, query result immediately, right, then you need to go with what uh, operators you need to use greedy op uh, operators. Right. Uh, I, I mean, uh, you need to use this uh, deep, uh, uh, immediate operators or greedy operators. And if you don't want the query result at the immediately, right, then you need to use this. Uh, deferred execution operators, right? So this is the difference between your deferred execution and immediate execution. Uh, th this is not that important concept, right? But uh, you should know how the linked queries are going to be executed. If I'm using the tool list method, then what is happening? If I'm not using the tool list method, then what is happening? That is the one. That is one thing you need to understand. Clear, guys? The next, uh, what we are going to discuss is group by. If, if anybody having any experience on any SQL uh, databases like Oracle, uh, like MySQL, like uh, SQL Server, then they know that uh, there is a clause called group by clause, and that clause is basically used to group the table data, right? If you are having a table or uh, that content, uh, some different types of employees, right? IT department employees, uh, sales department employees, HR department employees. And if you want to group the employees by department, then what you need to do, you need to use the group by method. The same thing is also uh, available in LinQ. The LinQ group by method belongs to the grouping method category. This method exactly does the same thing what the group by clause does in our databases. This method, what exactly it takes? It takes a flat sequence of elements and then organize the elements into groups. And that group, what uh, you can see, T key and T source. Like we are having different, uh, if you know, we are having a dictionary, right? In dictionary, what is there? Now one is key and one is data. The similarly grouping means what? It is having a key and T source. So what is this key? This T key is nothing but your grouping key on what on basis of what column, on basis of what property you want to provide the grouping. That is nothing but your T key. And what are the related elements, right? Suppose, suppose if you take the example of uh, uh, the employee, right? If your employee class having three different types of uh, uh, employee uh, table contains three different types of employees, then one is IT department, another is a sales department, another is HR department. Then this T key is going to contain IT, HR, and sales. And what this T source is going to contain, it is going to contain a collection of employees, right? Suppose IT department and inside IT department, you are having five employees. Then this a T source is going to contain five, uh, a collection of five employees. And again, sales department, 10 employees are there. Then T key, it is going to be a, a, the sales department, sales that is, you can consider it's a string value. And this T source, it is nothing but a collection of employees, right? Which is going to contain 10 employees. That means based on the given key, it is going to group the element, right? And what is the return time? If you go to the group by method, then you will see that the return time of this method is i enumerable of i grouping of a t key and t source, where t key is nothing but the key value on which the grouping has been born, and t source is the collection of elements that matches the grouping key value. If this is not clear at the moment, don't worry, we will try to understand this by taking some different types of examples. 
right? Let us understand this with an example. Okay, so for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the following uh, student class, right? Let me go and copy this code inside my student class, right? If you look at this uh, class, then you will see that this class having high properties. One is ID name, gender, branch, and age. Right, so you can group the employees by gender, you can group the employees by branch, you can also group the employee by age, right? So any, any column you can take as the key column. And then, and this is my data source. And here I have written some hard-coded student data. And if you remember, if you see here, we are taking CAC department, ETC department, right? ETC, CAC, two different department students. And as you know, there are two different types of students, male and female. And this is going to be our data source. And on this data source, we are going to perform the grouping operations. How we are going to perform the grouping operation? Let us see. So grouping students based on the branch. So now what is our requirement? We need to group the student based uh, on the branch, right? Let us see how we can do this by using the group by method, using both method and a for a syntax. Give me one minute, guys. Right. So uh, let me show you both the approaches. Uh, first, let, let us try to understand the, uh, what I can say, method syntax, right? So student dot get student. This is nothing but my data source. Student dot get student. As it's a static method. I can access directly by using the class name. That is what you can see here, data source. On this data source, what you need to do? You need to call the group by method. And whenever you are calling the group by method, what you need to specify? You need to specify the property name on which you want to group the elements. I want to group the element based on the branch column. Then you need to provide the branch column using the lambda expressor. In this case, what will happen? It will group the student based on the branch. And if you go to the definition of this method, then what this method is returning? It is returning I enumerable of I grouping of T key and T source. Right. So that is what you can see I enumerable of I grouping of a T key and T source. Here, what is key? Key is going to be string. And what is the source? Source is going to be student. So, right. So it is going to return me I enumerable of a I grouping of a string and a student. If you are confusing uh, what exactly these things, right? So what you can simply, simply remove this and use the bar keyword. That's, uh, that's also fine. Right. So this is using the uh, group by method. Right. Similarly, using query syntax, uh, there are two operators provided by LinQ. One is group by. So what? How you are going to work? See, in this case, this is my data source, and from this data source, I can access each element by using this std variable. Please, for each student in this data source. Right. For each student means this STD contains all the properties. Then what I need to do, I need to group student by student dot branch. Right. So here you need to provide group student by STD dot branch. So if you are getting confused, so let me make this sentence more uh, readable. Group student by branch. Right. So so any any approach here, you need to use group by method here you need to use group student by student dot branch. That's it. So, and, and if you remember, right, so there are two types of query execution. So in this case, what query execution? I enumerable of a grouping, right? Uh, so it is, if you, uh, if you move your mouse pointer over here, then you will see that I enumerable, I grouping of string and students because here the key, key is nothing but this one. What is the type of this key? If you go to the definition, the type is string. So based on this branch, we need the student information. So we need to group. So the key is nothing but your string and the value. 
value is nothing but your student information and that is what you can see here then you can uh, the iterate over this group by method right group by ms or a group by qs so whichever option you want you can use then it is going to return me it is an i enumerable right so see if if okay the point is the point that you need to remember if you are having list of uh, student if you are having list of students right and if you are using a for each loop then what is the type of this item variable in this case what is the type of this item variable can anybody tell me what is the data type of this item variable student 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 similarly in this case it is a collection right it is a collection of what i enumerable i it is a collection of i grouping string of students so in this case if i am going to look over this variable then what is the type of this group variable what is the type of this already i have written na if you remove these things okay now now tell me what is the type of this group variable i don't know what i what, enumerable of i grouping why i enumerable of i grouping so in this case is the type of this item variable is a list of student or only student oh, only student okay so if you are getting confused let me put this thing what is the type of item variable only student or i enumerable of student okay so it's only okay. student only student the so similarly in this case what is the type of this group variable it is going to be i enumerable of i grouping of string student or only i grouping of a string comma student i grouping of string comma student why you are thinking so much i don't understand if it is a collection then if you are accessing all the elements then the variable type is nothing but what type of this collection is all about this collection right this group by ms is a collection of uh, this type so this variable type is nothing but this type why you guys are thinking so much i don't understand right and this i grouping right so that means this is the collection of i grouping of students right you can use where is this thing no issue then what happens now this group there is a key property which will access what is the key key in the sense what is the value of this branch right so basically you are grouping the students by branch so in this case the key is nothing but the value of the branch property and how many elements are available inside a particular branch that is the count is going to give you and then if you want to access all the elements of that particular branch then you can use a for each loop and in this case variable student in group because this group is going to contain the element of student type so you can also instead of here you can also write student no issue right so using this loop you can see what is the name age and gender right so basically if the if the collection contains three different branches right then this uh, will return you a collection of i grouping of student uh, of three elements right and that element you can access one by one right let me run the application and show you the output no why i am getting error let me comment this so now you can tell me what type of query uh, is this this is default execution or immediate execution 
as a default execution default execution right so now if you iterate over this the query is executed and it is going to return me the data right if you check this group then you will see that what is the key key is cac what is the count count is six right and then uh okay let me run this so once you get the output then you will get the, uh okay so now you can see so in this case a group key that is cac and how many number of elements six and then whenever i use this for each loop and if you remember we are having only two different types of programs cac two three four five and six right so inside this loop also so this for loop right this for each loop access six element because there are six elements inside the group cac similarly again the, as there are two groups again this for each loop will execute twice second time it is going to return the etc group and here you can see the name which belongs to the etc department clear guys yes yes basically what is the link queue or what is the sql group by clusters the same thing is going to be done by this a group by method right so now we will see more complex example right grouping student by gender in descending order names in ascending order right so what is our requirement our requirement first we need to group the student by gender then we need to sort the groups in descending order sorting uh, uh, what it means it means first of all we need to group the student by gender but there are you can see two gender male and a female whichever uh, uh, gender information you want to print first that is what you need to decide then here, and here we decide we need to go with the descending order of the gender and then once we decide the gender in descending order then in each gender there are many employ many students and then we need to finally sort the names right of the student in ascending order right so this is what our requirement let me show you these things practically right so this is the simple query you know student dot get students dot group by a sorted a start gender this is nothing but your query in this case what will happen it will group the students by gender but that is not our requirement that is not our requirement right grouping the students by gender is not only the requirement what is the second require sort the groups in descending order it might be possible that there are correct uh, based on the gender we are having two groups right but it might be possible there are department wise you are going to sort the data group the data and it might be possible that there are 10 departments in the uh, in your organization and you want to show the data in a particular ascending order or descending order based on the department value then what you need to do then you need to use order by descending order method, right? So what is our requirement? We need to sort the groups in descending order. And what is the group? Group means, you know, there is a key. So order by descending, C sorted, C dot create. So this method, if you remember in the previous example, this method having a property called key, and that key is nothing but the value of the group by uh, column, right? In this case, gender is the property. And this gender property value you can access by using this key. So here I'm sorting the employee, uh, sorting the student data in descending order. And you know what method you need to use? Order by descending. If you want to sort the data in ascending order, then what method you need to use? Only order by. Clear? And here I'm going with order by descending. And once that is done, but that is also not the final requirement. Finally, we need to sort the student in each group in the name in ascending order. And if you look at this uh, thing, there are male, female, male, male, 
right? Male, male, male. There are multiple students who belongs to the category of a male. And now what is our requirement? We need to display this name Anurag first because the uh, A is comes before P, right? Basically in a sorted order, we need to display the student information. And for that purpose, what we need to do? We need to use the select projection operator. And here you can see I'm projecting the result to a anonymous type. And this select operator is a, a grady operator or it's a imitated operator, guys. We have more, we have just discussed. This is the, operators. Uh, this is the <laughs> deferred operator, right? So in this case, the query is not going to be executed. So in this case, you can see this is the select query, and here. I'm projecting the result to a named type or to an anonymous type? It's anonymous. Anonymous type. So in the anonymous type, you can access the uh, elements, right? STD.key. STD.key means it is going to give you the key name. And the uh, and then I'm using STD.orderBy method. This order by method, basically what exactly it will do, it will... Uh, I, I mean, whatever the collection, right? Whatever the elements available inside this uh, group, right? All those elements are going to be sorted based on the name in ascending order. And that is what we are going to store inside the student's color value, right? So basically, now if you see these things, right? Uh, this query, it is first going to do the grouping based on the gender. Then it is sorting the group not the element of the group, it is sorting the group based on the uh, key in descending order, right group. And then we are sorting the element of each group based on the name in ascending order. Three things we are doing here. Same thing is also you can do using query syntax. First, uh, uh, here what I'm doing, I'm grouping, uh, I'm fetching the student storing inside this variable, and then I'm grouping the students by gender. But whenever you are going to do other operations, you need to store this query into a variable. And what is that variable here I'm giving? I'm providing the variable name as a std group. Give me one minute, guys. I'm going to Okay, so, so basically whatever the query that we are storing inside this variable, right? Now this variable contains both the thing. What it contains? It contains the key as well as it contains the elements, right? So first we need to sort the data based on the key in descending. And for that, what we are using order by std uh, group dot key in descending order, right? So this will sort the data based on the key. If there are two key, right? If there are two group or three group, right? Based on the group, it is going to sort the data. Then what I'm going to do, I'm using this select new met uh, method, right? So this basically projecting the output to an anonymous type. And while we are projecting the anonymous type, if you remember, this std group contains both the thing. It contains the key and this uh, contains the data. So std.key means uh, that is what we are going to return as well as we want to return the corresponding data. And how we are going to return the corresponding data based on the order by, um, uh, so how we are going to return means we need to return the data in name ascending order. And uh, for that, we are using the order by method, right? Now, now if you look through this method, right? Uh, uh, group by query syntax, 
or group by MS in textile, the query is going to be executed. And then you can access the key. What is the key name, right? If there are two groups, three groups, we do not know how many groups. But if there are two groups, then the for each loop will be executed two times. If there are 10 groups, then this loop will be executed for two times. In our case, there are two groups, right? So this for each loop will be executed for two uh, two times, one for male employees and another, sorry, one for male students and another for female students, uh, right? And then it will store the male, uh, uh, it will store the male, uh, male uh, what is the key? Key is male. And how many number of students that you can access using group dot students dot count, right? And then using for each loop group dot students, uh, you can see group dot students then you can access each elements from the student collection and then you, you can print the data right now let me run the application see male uh, of five employees and the details are given below and in female uh, there are also five employees and the details is given below so first it will sort the data based on the um, uh, gender. See, you can see two uh, groups. And then it is sorting the data in name uh, in descending order. So male, female. So M letter comes uh, later and fem comes first. But as it is descending order, so male will come first and female will come later. And if you look at the element of uh, uh, each group, then you can see uh, the uh, element, the students are going to be sorted based on the name in ascending order. You can see Anurag, Prana, Sambhi, Santos, and what is this Anurag, right? Selena, and here you can see C H P P T. So this is how you can apply order by clause along with your grouping. Clear, guys? Yes. Right. So this is how you need to perform the grouping along with the order by clause. Right. But but if you see, if you see here what we are using, we are using what? We are using the anonymous type. Instead of anonymous type, can we use a named type? Yes, that is also possible. Let's see how we can do this. Right. Uh, first, let me create a class called student group. Uh, is there any yeah, student group class is there let me copy paste this code right so you can see I am created a class called student group which contains uh, two properties right that properties you need to decide we know uh, or the data is going to be in the form of a key and value and that key is nothing but your group name and values is nothing but the list of students belonging to that particular group. So I have created a string property and I have created a list uh, of students. So you can also use I enumerable of students, right? So this is what I have created here. And then what you need to do, you just need to copy this name, go to here provide the name like this. Go to here, provide the name like this. That's it. With these changes, with these changes, right, now you can run the application and you will also get the same output. Right? You are getting the same output. But in this case, it, it will work. But instead of I enumerable, if I use list, then this is not going to be war. Why? It is not going to be war. Why? Anybody tell me. So in this case, it is returning me I enumerable. See, I enumerable and list. Who is the parent and who is the child? Uh, you are storing parent reference in child. Uh, sorry. See. Uh, I of I number is storing in list so that is why it is not right so i enumerable and a, a list who is the parent and who is the child parent is this one right child is this one we can create an instance of a list and we can store inside this but if someone returning i enumerable then we cannot store that inside the list 
and in this case this is returning me i enumerable and i cannot store i enumerable inside the list and if that is the case then what you need to do and then you need to call the to list method and once you call the to list method the query will be executed at this point and that's it so in this case also you need to call the to list method that's it so with these changes you can now run the application and you will get the output as expected clear guys so this is how you need to work with your group by order by and uh, how you are also going to sort the elements of each group whether in ascending order and descending order how you can work with the uh, what i can say how you can work with anonymous type and what you can how you can work with the named type but but there is also one more important concept that you need to understand do you think that always you are going to group the data based on a single key or based on a single property or or is there also a requirement where we need to group the data based on multiple keys or multiple properties right if you are working with real time application then it is also possible that you need to group the data based on multiple keys for example uh, you are having some employees information there is a department column right and uh, uh, also there is some something called as gender column right now you need to group the data not only based on the department but also gender i need to group the data based on department and gender that means in each department uh, data again the data is going to be grouped based on the gender so department it gender male department it gender female department sales gender male department sales gender female so in that way also we need to group the data that means what now in most of the cases uh, if, if a single group by clause uh, if, if a single a uh, grouping is available right you need to group the data based on a single key or based on a single property that is fine but but in the most of the real time application you might you may be need to group the data based on multiple keys then how we can do this let us try to understand see now our requirement is to group the students based on the branch and the gender so first we need to group the student by branch then we need to group the student by gender also we need to sort the student in each group by name in ascending order so three things uh, we are going to do first group the student by uh, what i can say stu stu group the student based on branch and gender first we will group the student by branch then we will group the student by gender and then we will sort the students in each group by their name in ascending order so three things we need to do let's see how we can do this right so you can see the same group by method we need to use so this is my collection this is going to be written the data if you are using entity framework then you need to write a context dot students right that will return you all the student information then on this collection you need to apply the group by method and whenever you are applying group by method based on multiple column you need to specify more than one column and how you are going to specify by using an anonymous type right x is that new anonymous type and i am providing okay i am providing two column names now what are the branch first i need to group the data based on branch and then i need to group the data based on gender right then what i'm doing i'm selecting uh, the result to an anonymous type and here i'm storing the branch what is the key name branch gender what is the name gender right and then i'm sorting the groups right i'm sorting the uh, what i can say i'm sorting the students in each group each group means based on the branch and the gender in the name in ascending order so in this case uh, the key is not a single key the key is going to be branch and gender and in in combination with these two right how many students are there that are going to be displayed for example uh, if you see here so key is branch 
branch means CAC. In CAC, total how many employees, uh, how many students are there? Six students are there. But again, in CAC, how many different gender type students are there? Female is there, male is there, male is there, right? Female is there, female, male, female, right? So in this case, so three employees belongs to branch uh, uh, CAC and gender male and the three employees belongs to branch gender and uh, uh, branch CAC and gender female. And in each branch, uh, as there are three employees, those employees are going to be sorted based on the name in ascending order. The same thing is also we can do using this uh, Cori syntax and previously what we have used group student by std dot branch we have written but now it is not based on a single column now based on multiple properties or multiple columns you can say so for that purpose what i need to do i need to use this new operator uh, or you can say anonymous type and using the anonymous type we need to specify based on what are the properties based on that we need to group the data we need to group the data based on branch and gender Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this gender and branch. I'm just interchanging the things. Right. So select new. And in this case, what will this is the branch, this is the gender, and this is the student. And in this case, right, in this case, like here, you can access the variable uh, directly, right? G uh, is nothing but your key dot gender, G dot key dot branch why because now we are having two keys initially we directly access the key but now we cannot access the key directly because we are having multiple keys and that's why we create an anonymous type and from this type we can use the key and we can access the property branch we can access the property gender similarly here whatever the query we have stored inside this variable now from this variable by using the key property we can access the gender, we can access the branch. And then whatever the students in each group based on the branch and the gender, we are uh, sorting them by their name in ascending order. So now let me show you both the examples. So in this example, right? Okay, so let me run this one first. Uh, I'm, I'm running this method syntax uh, query first. See, so here uh, first it is group the data based on the branch, then gender. So CSC gender number of students three, and those three students are sorted based on the name in ascending order. Then branch etc gender male number of student equals to two and those two students. Like branch CSC gender male branch uh, etc gender female. So like this it is uh, sorting the data, right? So you can see branch CAC gender female, branch ETC gender male, branch CAC gender male, and branch ETC gender female. Now I'm going to run the second query. So in the second query, right, in the query syntax, the uh, uh, first, uh, see, in this case, we are first sorting the data based on the branch, then gender. But in this case, first we are sorting the data based on the gender, and then branch. Let me run the application. See, the same thing you are also getting. Yeah. So branch CAC gender female, branch ETC gender male, number of employees. So basically what I want to show you is we are sorting the data based on the two columns, right? And based on the two columns, the data is going to be grouped. So you cannot find any uh, so this is the CSA, this is the group or branch CAC and gender female. You will not find any ETC department data or you will not find any male uh, department data. See, in this case also, so there are some female employees here also, but they are not showing here. Why? Because they are not belongs to CAC department. They are belongs to ETC department. So accordingly, the sorting is going to be done by the group by method. Clear, guys? That's clear? Yes. 
Yes. Guys, these are the uh, things that you will write many times in your application. So try to understand these things very clearly. Okay. Now, now uh, our requirement is changed, right? Now, what is our requirement? Now, our requirement is to group the students based on branch and gender. First, we need to group the student by branch in descending order. Then we need to group the student by gender in ascending order on each group branch, right? Uh, ascending order. Then finally, the student in each group need to be sorted by their names in ascending order. That means what? Now currently what I'm going to do, I'm not only going to sort the students uh, in ascending order in each group, but also I need to sort the, you know, what I can say, I need to sort the groups also. Sort the groups means uh, uh, there are two conditions now. Nah? Uh, what are the conditions? First, we need to group the students in branch ascending or uh, branch descending order and then gender ascending order. So these are the two shortings. Additionally, we need to do apart from names in ascending order. So these are the three different shortings that we need to implement. Already we have seen how to sort the students in each group by their name in ascending order. Now, we need to provide another uh, two different sortings, right? And those sortings are not only not on the students, but on the groups, right? So let me show you how you can do. Group the student first by branch and then gender. So here you can see uh, I'm using the group by method using the anonymous type. I have specified two things. If you are having a single, then no need to use anonymous type. How you can do that? In that case, you just need to use like this. Group X sorted X dot uh, branch. So that is uh, uh, how you are going to sort the data. So if you are having a single, right? But as we are going to sort the by multiple keys, so you need to use the anonymous type. Once you sort the, uh, once you group the data by branch and gender, then we need to group in uh, uh, sort each group in descending order based on the branch. Then what do you need to do? Order by descending and how you can access this by using the key property g dot key dot branch. Then we need to sort each branch group in ascending order based on the gender, right? So once you sort the group uh, based on the branch in descending order, we need to sort the group in ascending order based on the gender, right? Then what you need to do, you know, once you use order by descending, then you cannot use this order by a method anymore. Because the primary sorting is done by this, from the secondary sorting, if you want to sort something, right, in uh, ascending order, then you need to use then by, and if you want to sort some things, right, uh, uh, in descending order, then you need to use then by descending. We have already discussed, right? So now we need to sort the gender in ascending order. Then I'm using then by method and I'm providing the gender key. And once you have grouped the data based on the branch and the gender, once you sort the data in descending order based on the branch, ascending order based on the gender, we need to project the ratio, right? And again, we are having two options. What are the options? You can go with uh, anonymous type. You can use anonymous type or you can use a named type. So let me first show you how I can use the anonymous type. Then I will show you how we can use the named type, right? So in this case, you can see this is my branch. Uh, one property is brand, one property is gender, and another property is students. And again, we are sorting the students by their name in ascending order. This is nothing but your method syntax. The same thing we are also going to do using the query syntax, right? Uh, we are grouping the student by branch and the gender. We are storing the query inside the student group variable. And from the student group variable, we are accessing the, uh, we are sorting the order of, the, right? We are sorting the branch in, descending order and as you know in query syntax there is no then by then by descending nothing is there any number of uh, 
uh, certain you want to provide, you can specify them by using the uh, comma, right? So in this case, sort group by gender. If you, you use this ascending, then that is fine. If you remove, then it is also fine because by default, this is going to be in ascending order to make our uh, query more understandable. I generally prefer to use ascending and descending, but if you remove, then there is no issue. And finally, we are projecting the result. Right now, you can run the application and you can see the output. Right? See, first branch in uh, descending order. So you can see E, ETC, ETC, then CAC, CAC. This is the branch in ascending order. Then gender in descending order. You can see. This is the primary shorting. Once the primary shorting, right, there are two brands, ETC comes. So then it will do the secondary shorting. Secondary shorting based on the gender, gender female and gender male, gender female and gender male. And then in each group, it is shorting the data in ascending order. So Lina, Hina, you can see C comes first, then Hina comes later. Clear, guys? Clear? Okay. Now, now instead of using this anonymous style, can we use a, a named type? Yes, that is also possible. If you remember, there is a, let me create a two more properties here. Let me convert this to I enumerable, right? What I'm going to do, I'm, giving this property name as branch. I'm giving this property name. You can give any name. There is no issue. Uh, right. And then I can copy this one and I can use this one here. I can copy here and I can it. Right. So I'm showing both the approaches. Why I'm getting the error? Oh, sorry. Not here. So we are projecting the result here. Right. So with these changes, now run the application and you will get the output. Okay. So this is how you need to use group by method in LinkQ. Clear, guys? How you can work with a single group, how you can grouping based on multiple keys, how you can group, uh, how you can sort the group uh, uh, keys, how you can sort the elements of each group, right? That is, uh, this is how you need to work, right? Based on your project requirement. Right? Clear? Or anybody having any doubt? No, sir. Okay. So the next, what we are going to discuss is another method. What is that method? Two lookup method. The two lookup method exactly does the same thing as the group by method, right? The only difference between these two methods is that group by method uses a default execution, right? A group by method uses default execution where two lookup method uses the immediate execution. And we have already discussed what is the difference between them. Right, what it means now if you are using group by method, then the query is created, not executed. And whenever we re -enum enumerate the query, right, whenever we access the query uh, using a for each loop, at that time the query is going to be executed. But in the case of a two lookup method, it uses immediate execution. Immediate execution means what now at the time of creation, the query is going to be executed. Right. Let us understand this with an example. We are going to work with the same student class, right? So, what is our requirement? Grouping student based on branch using the two lookup methods, right? So there is no nothing uh, new. So, what you just need to do instead of the group by method, you just need to use the two lookup method. Right. So instead of the group by method, you need to use the 
to look up method. to look up method see student dot uh, get students in initially we have used to group by now we are using to look up and here but but the see but the problem with the query index is there there is no to look up operator for that purpose you need to use the mixed syntax like this right here we are grouping the students by branch but but the point that you need to remember is so at this point of time, the query is executed. Previously, group by method written as the query, but now once you uh, compile this application or run this application, then you will see that this is going to contain the result. Let me run the application. So how many counts? Count two. Two means what? There are two groups written by this query, right? So now run the application and you will get the same output as expected, right? Six, four, and the data as expected. The same thing, no need to explain these things again and again, right? Now, uh, you want to do the same example grouping students by gender in descending order, names in ascending order in each group, right? So let me do, show you how we can do these things using the to lookup method. So to lookup is exactly does the same thing what your group by method does, right? So in this case, you can see first we need to group the data based on the gender. Then we need to sort the gender in descending order. Then we need to sort each student in each group in the, by their name in ascending order. And this is your method syntax. And in query syntax, you need to use this one. As there is no lookup operator available, so you need to use the to lookup method. Means in this case, you need to go with mixed syntax. Then you need to sort the key based on uh, key in descending order then the data in ascending order, right? So that is what you are seeing here, right? Now you can access the element, the or principle, right? Whatever we explained, everything is same. Only difference is you can work with a, this two lookup method or you can work with a group by method. The only difference is group by method uses default execution and uh, this uh, two lookup method uses what it uses it uses immediate execution right now if you want to instead of this anonymous type you want to use uh, this named type that is also possible right so we and students instead of this what you can do you can write the student group and here also you can write student group right so with these changes now run the application and uh, you will get the same output as expected. And here we are not using the anonymous type, rather we are using the named type. Clear guys, any question from anyone? Guys? No, sir. Right? So this is how you need to work with the tool lookup and you need to work with the uh, group by method. So based on your requirement, you need to use, right? If you want to uh, get the result immediately, right? And uh, then you can go with the tool lookup method. And if you want the result while you are reiterating and every time you want uh, updated data, right? Then you need to go with the group by method. So the most important concept, right? Uh, if you are working uh, in SQL, uh, right? TSQL statements, or if you are performing any complex application, one of the most important concept that you need to understand is joins, right? Without join, you cannot write complex queries. You cannot fetch data two or more tables without join. Again, there are different kinds of join available. We will try to understand each and every types of a join uh, using lead queue. So what is join? 
if you have any experience in any database systems like oracle mysql sql server then you may you may be familiar with sql chart and the link joins are not different than them right the way the joins work in the database in the same way sql joins is also going to work that means what it means it is going to face the data from two or more databases based on a common column right based on the common property it is going to face the data from more than uh, one uh, database tables or from more than one database object right that means what now if you are having uh, say whenever we are developing any kind of real time application we are not storing all the data in a single table we are uh, creating multiple uh, interrelated tables and we are storing the data in different different tables but but at some point of time we need to fetch the data and while we are fetching the data we also need to fetch the interrelated data and in that case as all the data is not stored in a single table, as the data is stored on multiple tables, in that case, we need to use joins and based on the common column or based on the condition, the data is going to be retrieved from the uh, from more than one database table and then we can represent the data to the user. Again, there are different types of joins are available, inner join is there, outer join is there. Again, outer join is classified into three types. Uh, the left outer join, right outer join, full outer join, again cross join is there. So all these things we are going to discuss using LinkQ. See, according to Microsoft, what he is saying, a join of two data sources is the association of objects in one data source with objects that share a common attribute in other data source. This is the Microsoft definition. I'm not interested with the Microsoft definition. I'm interested with my uh, simplified version of the above definition. What exactly join means? Join operations are used to fetch the data from two or more databases or from two or more data sources based on some common properties present in the data sources. If I'm fetching the data from two data sources, then those two data sources should have some common property. And based on the common property, I'm going to perform the joining operation. It is not only uh, it is not only that you can always going to perform the join in uh, based on two data sources. It is also possible you can perform the join using three uh, data sources. You can perform the join using four data sources, five data sources. It is up to you. And I will show you how you can perform join using two data sources, how you can perform the join using three data sources. All these things we are going to discuss practically. For example, why we need join, right? Let us understand uh, why we need join. See, let assume that you have uh, you are having three different database tables. One is employee, one is department, and another one is address. Now, I can, if I want, I can store all this information in a single table. But if we store all these things inside a single table, then we will face the database normalization issue. The data might be duplicated. The data might be redundant, right? So those kind of issues we will face. And to overcome such issues, we have split the data into multiple tables. And in this case, you can see I have split the data into three different tables. One is employee, another one is department, another one is address. But if you look closely, all these three departments are interlinked. Department, this is the master data. Is there any relation between this employee and department table? Yes, there is a relationship. What is the relationship? If you look at the employee table and department table, there is a common column. What is the common column? In employee table, the department ID column value are getting from the department table ID column value. That means now in between the employee and the department, the common column is department ID and ID. So based on these two columns, right, if uh, by comparing these two database table, if I will ask you, what is the department name of the employee Priyanka, then you can blindly say the department name of the employee Priyanka is ID. If I'm asking, if I'm asking in which department Sambit is working, then you will check what is the department ID 20. Let's go to the department table. What is the name of this ID 20 HR? Then you can say the employee Sambit is working on the HR department. 
That means there is some relation between these two table and how you are identifying the relation based on the common column. And in this case, department ID and ID. Now, if I'm, uh, well, if I'm comparing this employee and address table, then also there is a link. What is the link? The common li the link is this address ID property refer to the ID property of this address table. That means what? Now, if I'm asking, what is the address of the employee Preeti? Then you will get the address ID from the employee table 102. You will go to the address table and you will check what is the address line of this employee uh, of this ID 102. Yes, address line. So the address of this employee is this one. That means there is also a link between the employee and the address table. That means there are some interrelated, uh, that, that means the related data are there, but they are split into multiple tables. But now my requirement is this. My requirement is I want uh, you to write a query or uh, I want to display this information on the website or on my web page. Right? What is the information? I want to display the ID of the employee, the name of the employee, in which department he is working. I'm not interested in this 1020 like this. I'm interested in the department name. That is what I'm going to display. I'm not interested with this menu 101, 102, 103 like this. I want to display the address, exactly what is the address of that particular employee. That is what I'm going to display. So basically my requirement is to display the data like this and if you want to display the data like this then that means you need to paste the data from these three different tables and how you can paste the data because because it, it, it's not like that employee um, id from priyanka i'm showing hr and i'm showing the address line for three this will not be the case I cannot, I cannot blindly pick any department any address and uh, add with the particular employee i i want to paste the Eject or the actual information for department ID 10 means it should display ID. Address ID 101 means it should display address line 1. And if this is the requirement, then what you need to do? You need to use joins. Clear, guys? Guys? Yes. Right. Then what are the methods available in LenQ to perform join? So basically, there are two different methods available in the LenQ to perform the join. One is the method join and one is the method group join. What is join method? How to use join method, right? What are the different operations we can perform using these two methods that are we are going to discuss in detail, right? But before that, we need to understand what are the different joins available. See, if you understand this uh, diagram clearly, then you will understand. Inner join means what? Now, if you are having two data sources, what are the common elements? That is what is going to be written by the inner join. What is right outer join? So, right join and right outer join, meaning is same. Don't confuse between uh, if I'm saying right join or if I'm saying right outer join, both are going to be same. Outer, it, actually, it is outer join, but outer join is classified into three types. One is right outer join, one is left outer join, one is full outer join. So in the case of a right outer join, it is going to face the common elements as well as the elements which are, uh, uh, so in simple word, you can say it is going to face all the elements from the right hand side table, right? Whether that element having a match record available in the left hand uh, side table or not. If match record available, then that element will be written. And for non-matching element, it will take the default value. What is default value? What is match, unmatch, right? Everything we will discuss practically. Left join means it will fetch all the data from the left hand side table, right? Whether that data having a matched data or not in the right hand side table. If having the matched data, that matched data will be written from the table two, right? And for that case, if for the unmatching data, it will take the default value. Full outer chain means all the data from both the tables, it is going to return. Apart from these four chains, uh, there is also a call, term called a cross chain. Cross chain means each record of a data source is joined with each record of 
other data source. For example, if table one contain five records and table two contain five records, that means in that case, the result will be five into five. The Cartesian product or Cartesian product between the two tables, five into five means 25 records will be returned in the case of a question. That is what we are also going to discuss. Out of all this join, inner join, right? It is supported by LinQ. Left outer join, it is supported by LinQ. Right outer join, it is not supported by LinQ, but as left outer join is supported by LinQ. So if you want to perform right outer join, then what you need to do? You just need to interchange the table. In this case, table one, table two, Right, left out uh, in the left outer chain, you are using table one, table two. If you want to perform right outer chain, just interchange the table. First data source is table two, second data source is table one. Full outer chain directly not supported, but using this uh, uh, left outer chain and using the sorry, using this left outer chain and union operation, right, we can implement full outer chain as well as a cross chain. Uh, okay, cross chain is also. We are going to implement but apart from all these things this is the join which is mostly and frequently used in real-time application what is that inner job so next what we are going to start the discussion we are going to start discussion on the inner join concept again uh, i'm going to show you how to work with a single table or two database table how to work with multiple database table all those things we are going to discuss so what is as for microsoft documentation an inner join produces a result set in which each element of the first collection appears one time for every matching element in the second collection if an element in the first collection does not have any matching element in the second collection then it does not appear in the result set so this is the microsoft documentation let us simplify the above uh, definition so in simple word, we can say that inner join is used to return only the matching elements from both the data sources while the non-matching elements removed from the result set. If you look at this, this is the data source one, this is data source two, and these are nothing but your matching element. So inner join means it is only going to return the matching element from the from both the data sources, non-matching elements are simply ignored. And while performing the inner join, there should be a common element exist uh, in both the data sources. If no common element means joining is not possible. Common element in the sense what? The data type should be same. If the data type one is integer, means you can compare with the integer. Uh, if data source one contains integer, then data source two should have the property with the type integer. Don't think that one data source contains integer, another data source contains string, and I'm going to perform the joining operation. This is not possible. Common means the data type should be same. How to implement inner join, right? So to implement inner join, right? So we need to use the join method, right? As I mean, as I told, there are two methods provided by LinQ to perform the join operations. One is join, one is group join. What is group join? We'll discuss later. But to implement inner join, so what method we need to use? We need to use the join method, right? The join method works on two or more data sources. Or okay, forget about multiple data sources. Let us focus about two data sources. We will discuss definitely how we are going to work with multiple data sources, but let us start discussing with two data sources, right? So this join method works or operates on two data sources. You can say two collections, you can say two sequences, you can say two tables, right? And and so, so two collection or two sequence or two tables means what? One of the collection is inner collection and another one is outer collection. What is inner collection? What is outer collection? We'll discuss. Okay. And this method, once it performs the joining operation, it returns a result, right? It returns the result as a collection that contains data from both the data sources, right? And if you know how to perform inner joining in SQL, the same thing is going to be performed by this join method. And again, there are two overloaded versions available of this method. As you can see on my screen, 
right? So, uh, uh, so the difference between these two overloaded uh, version is that the second overloaded version takes i equality comparer parameter, and you know when and how to use this i equality comparer parameter. I'm not going to keep focus on this one because, uh, you know, there are many different ways we can use the comparer. You can create an instance of uh, I equality comparer, right? You can inherit a type from the I equitable comparer, and you can also override the get hash code and equals method of the object class, right? So you, we have already discussed this thing, right? So just uh, ignore this I equality comparer. And if you ignore this I equal it comparer, the signature of both this method is going to be same. You can see there is one outer variable, one is inner variable, one is outer key selector, one is inner key selector, and one is result selector. That means we need to understand what all these parameters are, right? So one is outer parameter. So this outer parameter is nothing but the outer data source, or you can say this is the first data source, right? If you want to join two table, then definitely there is a table one and a table two, whichever table comes first, that is nothing but your first table. Then uh, using join next, you are specifying another table that is nothing but your second table. So in the same way, outer data source is nothing but this is the first data source that needs to be involved in the join and inner data source is nothing but your second data source. Outer key selector, that, see, so whenever you are performing the joining, so in the on clause, you are using, uh, you need to specify the column name, right? So column name means what? You need to specify what is the, see, in this case, outer data source. Outer data source means it, con it should contain some columns. What is the common column from the outer data source? that you need to be specified using this outer key selector. And what is the, on which, column, based on what column you need to do the comparison. In Inside this, let assume that outer data source contains the address ID, inner data source contains the ID. Then, and you know that these are the two columns based on which I need to perform the uh, joining. Then in outer key selector, you need to specify address ID and in inner key selector, you need to specify the ID. That means this is the common column on which the uh, uh, joining operation is going to be performed. And result selector means, see, in this case, whenever you are performing the joining operation, then the outer data source content 10 columns or 10 properties, inner data source content 10 properties, then how many properties you want as part of your result set that you need to specify using the result select. That means we need to project the result set using the result selector, right? And we can do all these things using both LinQ method syntax and as well as using the query syntax. Let us understand this with an example, okay? So let me first create two different tables. One is employee to store the employee's information and address table to store the address information, right? Let me create the employee class. Already employee class is created. I'm just uh, copy pasting the code, right? And if you look at this employee class, it's a very simple class. You can see having ID name and address ID, three properties are there. And here this get employees, get all employees method going to return some hard-coded employee information. But in real time, this will return the data from the database. But here, we are not focusing on ADO.NET or NTD paper. We are only focusing on the LinQ concept. And that is the reason why I have hard-coded the things. And you can see it is returning a list of employees. And you can see ID is there, name, property value is there, and address ID is also there. So this is the employee class, three properties one method returning list of employees and this is going to be one of our data source. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the address class, right? So address in the sense, as you know, using a single, uh, right, using a single data source, we cannot perform the join. Joining means there, at, there should be two data sources, right? And we have already created the, uh, we have already created the employee data source. Let me create the address data source. So here I'm creating two uh, properties, ID and address line. 
and then uh, this is my get addresses method, right? So this method is going to return me the list of addresses. So so think that this table return uh, this get employees method return the data from the employees table, and this method return the data from the address table. But there is a common column. There is a the relation between these two table what is the relation in the employees table this address id column referring to the id column of this address table so this is the uh, relation so there is a common column or there is a link between this table and the link is established based on the address id address id means employee table address id column will refer to the id column of the address table so this is the link that means we have two data sources we have uh, the common column, right? And now what is our requirement? We need to return the employees, right? We need to return the employees using the inner join. But, but guys, remember, whenever you are going to use inner join, inner join basically going to retrieve the data based on the common column. That is for sure. But what data it is going to return? The data which is exist in both the data sources those data it is going to return right so if you look at this table so address layer so this is my address table in this case you can see one two three four five address line six seven eight is not exist and if you go to the employee table six seven eight is there so this address id is there but this address id what value i'm storing here 678 is available inside this table no no that means what now whenever we are going to perform the inner join these three employees will not be as part of our result set that is for sure so what is our requirement we need to face the employees which having the corresponding address in the address table. If one employee does not have any address, then we don't want that employee in our result set. If you want that employee to be our to be your result set, then we are having other gens. We can go with the outer gen. But now we are discussing the inner gen. Inner gen means the element which exists in both the data sources is going to be written as part of the result set. In this case, this address ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11 exist here as well as exist here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 9, 10, 11 also exist here. So these employees are going to be written as part of our result set. That is what our record. Now, now the biggest question is how we can implement this using method syntax and using query syntax. Let us first understand how we can do this using the method syntax. Later, I will show you how to use the, uh, how you can implement this using the query syntax. Look at this uh, picture, right? So employee.gal or get all employees, right? So basically, uh, right. so basically you need to understand, okay. So how many things is required to perform the join? To perform the join, at least five things is required. What are one? One is outer selector or outer data source, inner data source, outer key selector, inner key selector, and one is result selector. So in this case, see out this outer data source, nothing but this is the first data source or first collection to be involved in the chart. And that is nothing but your employee that get all employees. This is nothing but your outer data source or first data source. Then you need to use the join method and inside the join method, you need to provide the inner data source, outer key selector and the inner key selector, all these things, right? So I'm using the join method and within the join method, what I'm providing, I'm providing the inner data source. Who is going to be the inner data source? This is my outer data source. This is going to be my inner data source. Address dot get all addresses. This is going to be my inner data source. Once you provide the outer data source and inner data source, then you need to specify two things. What are the common column between these two 
data sources by using the outer key selector and the inner key selector right now if you go to the uh, outer data source what is the column name what is the property name property name is address id so that you need to specify here. So employee such that employee dot address ID. You would say this employee will refer to this employee dot get all employees, right? Employee dot get all employees is referred by this employee. See, this is the first data source means this is going to be the variable which will access the first data source. And that uh and address. Address means you are using second. Second means this will refer to the inner data source or the second data source. You cannot access this ID property using this variable or you cannot access this address ID using this variable. Why? Because this employee refers to the first data source, this address refers to the second data source. In employee table, what is the common column name or property name? The property name is address ID. This is going to be your outer key selector. And what is the property name that you want to be involved in the inner join? from the second data source or inner data source. The second, if you go to the address table, the property name is ID. And that is what I'm specifying here. Once you perform this, right, then you have to use one anonymous method, right? So, uh, so this is nothing but your Lambda expression. You are having two objects. You are having the employee data, employee collection here, address here. And from this employee and address, what are the properties you want to fetch? That is what I'm projecting here using one anonymous type. I will show you how you can project to a named type, but now I'm projecting to an anonymous type. I want the employee name. So the employee name, employee name you can access using this employee variable because this employee variable refers to the past data source where the name of the employee is stored, employee. I want to access the address line. Address is stored inside which collection? Address is stored inside the inner collection, inner data source. Inner data source, you are accessing using which variable? Using the address variable, address dot address line. And I'm storing that value inside this address line. You want to execute this query immediately? Call this to list method. So this is how you need to use join using the method syntax, right? Let me copy the code. Go to the program class, right? See, this is the performing inner, uh, performing inner join between employees and address data sources. This is my outer data source. How you will get employee dot get employee method? If you are using entity framework, context dot employees that will return you all the employees that is going to be your outer data source. Inside this join method. I need to specify all these things. Okay, to simplify these things, what I can do is I can do like this. So everything I have written inside the join method. What is this? This is the outer data source. Outer data source means this is nothing but address dot to get all addresses. This is employee dot address ID. So this employee, this is a variable which is pointing, which will access all the element of this data source. Try try to use the ID property and see what happens. So if I'm using employee.id, then what this ID refer to? This ID will be referred to this one. So do you think that this ID is the common property or this ID is the common property? Which one is the common property? If you want to establish the relationship between employee and address table, you need to use this ID or you need to use this address ID, which one? Guys? Nice. Address. address id so you can see address id so you need to use the address id and from the second data source what is the common property name id so from this second data so try to store your address id you will get a compilation error why because this address id is not available in the address class why because this address is pointing to the inner data source and in inner data source, what it is returning list of address. And in address class, there is no such property called address ID. What property is there? ID property is there. So you can use this ID property. Right now, now in employee class, there is a property called name. Can I use that name property here? 
See why? See what error it is giving? The the default equation used to compare keys, right? So in this case, the value of this property is not uh, is of type string. And the value of this property is of type integer. You cannot prove it. Guys, give me one minute. So, so, so the point that you need to remember is the property should be of same type. You can give ID or address ID, no issue. If you give ID, then you will not get any error because the type is compatible, but you will not get the appropriate result, right? So basically, you need to provide the common property name, right? And here you can see I'm, I'm creating, I'm projecting the output to an anonymous type. And how you will project, you will use the method, right? Uh, anonymous method, right? In this case, uh, these two variable, I'm accessing employee and address and projecting the results. And I'm accessing the name by using this employee and addressing the address line using this address variable, right? And then I'm projecting the result. So this is how you need to use the method syntax. And then you can access the employee data using a for each loop and you can print, right? If you want to uh, address the other information, then also you can access. There is uh, no issue. You can access every information. Let me first run this application and show you the output. You can see those uh, employees, only eight employees are written in this example, right? Now, if you want to see which employees are not written, I'm providing ID. And what ID you want to display? I want to return the employee ID, right? So it is not mandatory that name should be same. You can give any name. See here, I'm providing employee name, employee ID, right? So now you can also store here ID, right? Employee dot employee ID. Right, so now run the application and you will see that those three employees should not be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is not there. Rest 19, 11 is there. So this is how you need to perform the join using the method syntax. Any question from anyone? Guys? No, sir. Right. So this is how you need to use join. And if you want to, uh, right, if you want to project the output to a, a named type, then what you can do, you can create a class employee address, right? And instead of this, you can project the data to this. So, but this employee address doesn't have the employee ID column. So what you need to do, you need to create an integer type property employee ID. Right. With these changes, right uh, now you are projecting the output, uh, projecting the result to a named type, right from the application, and you will get the output as expected. Right. So there is no difference in the output. This is how you need to work with the LinQ method syntax. But I generally prefer to use. I generally prefer to use query syntax when I'm working with the complex queries, right? Like joining, right, to group by. So in that scenario, I prefer to use query syntax. Let us see how we can do the same thing using the query syntax, right? Okay. So using query syntax, uh, uh, we can also implement the join operation and uh, there is an operator called join is available. And this query syntax is very much similar to your SQL queries, right? See, from EMP in employee.get all employees, you can consider this as select star from your first table name, join second table name on 
the first table name property equals to second table name property. So this uh, syntax is very much similar to your SQL. So you can see from EMP in employee dot get all employees. I'm accessing the first employee information or first collection using this EMP variable. I'm I'm joining this collection with the address collection and how address collection I'm accessing this uh, uh, address collection using this address variable. So it's very similar to select star from table one join uh, table two on table one dot id equals to table dot two dot id. The same thing is also applicable here. From EMP in employee dot get all employees, we are accessing all the first data source using this EMP variable. I'm accessing the second data source using this address variable. And I'm joining this first data source collection with second data source collection using the join operator. And as you know, when we are going with join operator, we need to provide the condition on based on what column we are going to fetch the data and that we can implement using the on clause. If you remember uh, in SQL, even we are also using this on and equals uh, method, right? Uh, on EMP dot address ID equals to address dot ID. So once this is done, then you can select, uh, you can project the output to anonymous type or to a, uh, what I can say, named type. So if you want to project the anonymous type, you can write like this, emp.name and the address line dot name, right? Let us see this example. Right? So this is nothing but your first data source. This is joining with inner data source. And this is your joining condition. And this is you are projecting the output to an anonymous type, right? And if you want, then you can also fetch uh, the employee ID equals to EMP dot ID. So if you want, then you can fetch. Right now, if you run the application, you will get the output as expected. Right? So you can see eight, uh, eight employees are written, right? Now, if you want to print the employee ID, then what you can do is you can write like this. Employee dot employee ID, right? You can see six, seven, eight is not written, right? Now, Instead of using this named type, can I use the anonymous type? Uh, instead of using anonymous type, can I use a named type? Yes, that is also possible. What you need to do, you just need to project this to a named type. That's it. Run the application. We're getting the result as expected. So today we have, uh, today we discussed how to perform joining between two data sources. And tomorrow I'm going to show you how you can join multiple tables, three tables, four tables, uh, five uh, data sources, five collections, right? How you are going to perform, how you are going to perform the group join, right? As we discussed the two methods provided by LinQ to perform join. One is join, another is group join. How, what is group join? How you can perform those things? What is, uh, how you are going to implement the outer join? How you are going to implement the cross join, right? Those things we are going to discuss in our next session, right? That is tomorrow. Any question from anyone? Related to today's session, they can ask me now. Guys, nice. clear? Yes, very clear. Okay, that's fine. Guys, uh, please be practice these things because. If you are working with any real time application, then definitely you will you definitely you came across this type of queries, right? Uh, initially, I'm starting with simple example. Gradually, we'll move towards uh, more and more complex examples. But uh, behind this thing, if you know the basics, right? If your basics is clear, then this will not be because uh, any problem uh, you should not be confused if i'm using a new and uh, it is working if i'm removing this thing then still it is working you should not have any question in this case it is projecting to an anonymous type here you can see what is the anonymous type a 
see niche what is written underneath the a is new right and if i am writing this then what is the type you can see list of employee address so this is the basic things that you need to know you should know what is the use of this select method select method basically projecting the result what are the result you want to retrieve that is what you need to use right and uh, you should understand what is this join right and uh, how you are performing the join you should have a common column between the two data sources right common column in the sense the you know, what i can say the data type is going to be same right so in this case if instead of uh, it address it i can also write it so if i write it then how many records are going to be written can anybody tell me by looking at this this employee table id column is there and address table id column is there if i'm joining right if i'm joining this two column based on the id emp table id and address table id then how many records are going to be written any guess from anyone Guys, match records. Sorry, match records. Uh, match records, I know, but how many records? By looking at this uh, classes, by looking at this collection, how many records? I'm not asking match records. I'm. I just want to know the number of records. How many number of records are going to be retrieved? Eight records. Eight records. In, in, any other answer from anyone else? How, how, how eight records? Can you please explain? Six, seven, eight is not there in so here the condition is based on the employee table id column employee class id column with the address class id column in employee class id column the values are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 9 10 11 right and in address the values are like this right now run the application Yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. But uh, in this case, you are getting the output expected, but that doesn't mean uh, it is the correct output. Right? Why I'm saying, uh, uh, let, let assume that the employee ID is like this. Now, how many records are going to be retrieved? One. One. Why? Because this employee ID one, it will compare with the address ID one and one match is found. So that is what it is going to return. But is that the correct result? Is this the correct result? No. So this to use the address id now if i use the address id how many records are going to be written again eight records right right so you need to uh, you need to use the appropriate column uh, for the comparison while performing the joining operation it should not be uh, definitely the data type is going to be same but it might be possible that with the same data type multiple columns are there multiple properties are there but based on what property i need to do the joining that is what you need to identify, right? So this is how you need to work with LinkQ join with the two data sources. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to work with multiple data sources. That's it for today. Anybody having any question, they can ask me. Otherwise, we can stop the session. Okay. Thank you, guys.